hey everybody if you're live with us hang tight we're getting elizabeth on we just lost her for a moment and then we'll get started so i know we're live streaming now so hey everybody while you're um while we're waiting for everybody to get back on board here um tell us where you're from in the chat box uh let us know where you're listening from this is going to be a really amazing um day interview dr jill live episode today um, I'm with uh, new friends, Emily and Rachel, and I'm going to introduce them in just a second. Um, as you know, you can find all of the uh, podcasts on YouTube or on um, Stitcher or iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, please jump in there and um, listen and review um, so more people can uh, hear these episodes. Today, I am so excited to introduce Elizabeth Kripe and Emily Rachel. Um, they're both from Texas and I will introduce them each personally, but they founded an organization called Malachi's Message. And today we're going to hear all about what they are doing to help mold victims. If you're out there, a lot of my patients, colleagues, friends, followers have had mold-related illness. I've become somewhat of a mold expert um, due to my own experience. And today we're going to talk to these two beautiful women who are actually doing something for those of you out there who are suffering and maybe need some assistance. And we'll talk all about that today. Let me first introduce both of my guest. Um, first, I have Elizabeth. Elizabeth studied psychology in California. Um, she completed her, oh, is it California, Texas? That's a city in Texas, right? Oh, no. No, I finished, I did my degree in California. Okay, gotcha. I saw this Texas. Yeah, I'm a now, Texas I, transplant. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I saw that. I'm like, is there a city in Texas? That she completed her teaching. <laughs> credential program in California. She taught junior high, high school and continuing high school students for seven years before becoming a stay-at-home mom, one of the most important things on the planet. <laughs> her family moved to Texas for a better life and a new job um, for her husband. And after her second daughter turned one, they moved into an apartment that set her on her mold journey. And we're gonna hear about that today, so stay tuned. Elizabeth and Derek for a short time were homeless and had no savings left to spend. Again, I know so many of you listeners know what that's like. They knew after recovering that helping people in the position they had been in was the only option. Um, Elizabeth's life was forever changed when the diagnosis of MCAS, PCOS, and celiac disease after the mold exposure. She's not only co-founder of Malachi's Message, but also serves in the capacity of executive director. So um, uh, Elizabeth, first of all, so happy to have you here. And we're going to hear your story. So stay tuned if you're listening. Um, Emily, I want to introduce you as well, and so excited to have you here too, both from Texas. She's um, studied journalism in Austin before she found her passion in helping people build or customize their perfect home. She loves everything about real estate until she and her family became victim to their home's toxic indoor environment. Her family suffered greatly, and you lost your second son, Malachi, which is the namesake of the uh, organization, Malachi's Message. Um, in whom this foundation is in memory of, he inspires her to help people the way she wished someone could have helped them. Um, her, she and her husband, Josh, since their mold exposure, have dedicated their life to helping mold victims through their company, Texas Mold Inspectors in the Houston, Texas area. She is also co-founder of Malachi's Message and serves on the board in the capacity of board chair. And you guys reached out to me, and we'll talk about again even how you connected to me, but um, I was delighted when I saw your flyer and your message about what you were doing to help people. Um, there's a couple areas as a doctor that I can't do a whole lot about. One is I am not an environmental expert. I've, I guess I've become kind of, I know a lot about the technicalities, but I can't go in patient's house and find the mold and help remediate it. I have to rely on other professionals. And the other thing is I always like literally get a check in my heart when I'm sitting across from a patient, because as I tell them, I really think there's mold in your home and it's making you sick. I know it's going to cost thousands of dollars, either remediation or moving, or some people lose their home. So I had, I literally had tears in my eyes when I read the brochure and the things you guys sent me about Malachi's message, because I know those of you listening have had your own stories. And I want to hear both of your stories because so many people are suffering and it's just devastating in so many ways, emotionally, physically, mentally to relationships. And as, as you know, well, Emily, even loss of life. So let's start in about, tell me a little bit about both of your stories with mold and how you first kind of encountered this dark toxin. And then we'll talk about Malachi's message. And maybe Elizabeth, do you want to start first with, with what happened with sure. you? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Um, my husband was a fabricator in California for about 13 years. And when the drought hit, he thought we need to go into something more sustainable. So he got an apprenticeship in Texas as an apprentice lineman. 
to climb power poles and make sure everybody's electricity is left on. Mm -hmm. I just have to clarify, a few women have asked me, oh, you're married to a lineman? Like what football team does he play for? And I have to go, no, if you, no, no, if you saw him, you would know he's not a lineman. Um, and we moved here with like great intent. We wanted to build just an incredible life for our kids. And we ended up in a studio apartment on an apprentice scale and I had a high risk pregnancy. I was on bed rest. So I was not able to work at the time. And um, we, a year after living in Texas, we found a two bedroom, two bath apartment and we thought, perfect. We had two daughters. The one had turned one the day before we moved into the apartment. And we thought this is great. You know, privacy would be amazing. And within December 1st to July 9th, like we had over, I think over, my husband said he counted a week ago and over 200 doctor's visits, ER visits, um, specialist visits. We saw neurologists, ENTs, uh, a, you know, a long myriad, like so many people. I was taken by ambulance three times to the emergency room for my throat closing with anaphylaxis and my daughters watched it every time to the point that my youngest would just grab my leg if I went to the store because she was so scared oh. that another ambulance going to come and take mommy away. Yeah. Um, and so we just thought, oh, maybe it's the humidity. Maybe it's a stress of moving, right? Maybe it's just the stress of a new job and less sleep, you know, a new baby. She's still on. She was kind of difficult. Yeah. And then, you know, all the symptoms started. So my youngest who was starting to talk when we moved into the apartment stopped progressing at all. It got to the point that like she stopped making sounds and she would walk into walls. She actually got kicked out of her daycare because they said she was too much of a liability because her daycare workers never knew when she was going to fall and she would like gash her head. She would scrape her arm and they said, I'm sorry, we don't know what's going on. We took her to her pediatrician who sent us to a neurologist. They said, everything is fine. And we were like, no, something is, something's not okay here. My oldest was three at the time and she was having bloody noses almost daily, like pulling yes. hair. I remember in the shower once pulling her hair and I'm going, mommy, is this normal to lose my oh. hair? Oh. I'm thinking, no, this can't be normal. And I'm asking doctors, right? And nobody's giving me an answer. And both were hallucinating. Both would take like four hour naps in the middle of the afternoon after sleeping for 12 hours straight through the night. And she, she is advanced for her age. Um, like with speech. And so she actually regressed to the point that she couldn't form a sentence. She was trying to say like the word cat and she would start yelling just sounds at us. And we're like, baby girl, what are you, what are you trying to say? And she would get so mad because she couldn't understand why we didn't know she was saying there's a cat. Oh, and that's it was like classic word finding for a three-year-old. Yes. Like we talking about word finding, but that's like a three-year-old version of it, right? And they can't get this. <laughs> That's exactly it. Like the wow. brain fog and everything yeah. else. Like she was experiencing it at a young age. My husband and I were very passionate people. Um, we're very independent, but we're very respectful of each other. And we were experiencing like mold rage. Yes. It's real. And we were getting angry and yelling. And we're like, who, what is going on? This is not us. I was getting debilitating migraines. Oh. My OB told me I needed to probably have a full hysterectomy because they couldn't figure out where the pain was coming from. I was 35 at the time. Um, it was just, it was not enjoyable to say the least. I had hives on my back for a month straight. Right. And I'm like, oh, this is not normal. Like, oh my goodness, everything's bigger in Texas, but nobody told me about all of this. Right. Um, and so we, we talked to our landlord at the apartment and they said it was just dust. Then I went to my allergist and got my shots and my throat closed again. And he said, I can't even give this amount to a newborn. There is wow. something in your environment. And I thank God for that allergist because I went home, told my husband and that same night, my daughter slipped, our AC was leaking. And my husband started to go through every vent because he goes, your doctor just said it's in our environment. Yes. You guys are home more than I am. Our AC is leaking. There's got to be something in our ventilation system. Wow. So he pulled all the screens off and looked and he's like, this is not dust. Wow. So we searched online and like read the reviews for inspectors, not knowing at the time, the difference between like a licensed mold inspector yeah. and somebody that is just doing it. And thankfully we got a hold of Texas mold inspectors and my husband called them and my daughters and I left, we came back and Josh was standing out there with my husband who at the time had just had surgery on both wrists, like due to the exposure too. And he just said, well, if you want to heal your family, you need to leave and not look back. Wow. And at the time I remember my husband was on unpaid leave as an apprentice and we had a total of like $111 in our bank account. Mm -hmm. And we just looked at each other and went, well, then we have to leave. Yeah. And my 
oldest looked at me and like communicated, like, can I go get my doll inside the apartment? And I had to tell her no. And that was heartbreaking. And we didn't know, like we called family. Um, a good set of friends took us in on their floor that night. My daughters and I flew to California to stay with family. And my husband had physical therapy still. So unfortunately, the next four months, he slept in his truck. Oh, um, left on buddy's couches and in near Galveston Bay and the buildings are older and they had a lot of mold. So he would leave there and go sleep in his truck. Oh. And then he tried to go back to the apartment once or twice. But I, he's like, I just couldn't like I could feel it just suffocating me knowing like this is what tore our family apart. I just couldn't be in that place. So we tried to pursue legal action um, and we found out there are some corrupt lawyers, unfortunately. Yeah. We lost that battle, which was not great, um, but we tried, right? Like I have to say, we kept trying, we kept fighting, and we eventually found a doctor in California. We found one that we thought was helpful, and it turned out it wasn't 20 grand later. Oh, we found sorry. a second doctor that uh, I call her my unicorn. Like she is amazing, and she like right away found our toxins she worked on my gut she didn't detox us super hard she was the one that actually diagnosed um, my mass cell activation syndrome and i i mean i have to say thank you to you at this point too though i know we talked before a little bit but while i was searching and doctors were telling me there was nothing else wrong with me and i was looking at mass cell activation syndrome i remember looking at some of the stuff you would put out there and going okay i'm not crazy like there's, a, there's actually somebody out here saying this is real. Then I, it gave me the boost to like keep going and keep fighting and keep trying to find somebody that would listen to my story. And that was huge because, you know, I was still going through brain fog and we're five years out now and I'm functioning enough to run Malachi's message, but Emily knows we became very fast friends, more like a sister at this point. And three years ago, I couldn't walk up a flight of stairs. Like my body was still so inflamed and I used to run five miles a day. So the, you know, it just destroys, it just destroys you and almost tries to tear your identity. Right. And like reformat who you are and you're trying to look in the mirror and go, no, I swear this is me. This it's is still me. inside. Yeah. So like I'm still there. I promise. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for sharing. There's so many things in your story that I can relate to. My patients can relate to, and everybody listening, I'm sure who's been through it. Um, the brain fog, the relationship issues. I'm in the midst of writing my book, which is partial memoir and also about environmental toxicity. And the same thing, I talk a lot about, about how the limbic system causes dysfunction and ability to express ourselves, even inside and to know what's happening and especially communicating with other people. So over and over, your experience is not like you had this great relationship. You're like, what is going on? Because the mold affects our ability yeah. to communicate and even the emotions are crazy. And, um, and then your daughter with the words, that's so classic for many of us word finding and and then even the five years like I'm six years out and I feel like I'm back to my baseline but it takes so many like I usually tell patients six months minimum and often 18 months it's a very long course so um wow um Emily do you want to share just a little bit about your journey and like uh what you know because you had a similar journey and then you guys got to Malachi's message but would you like to tell us a little bit about your journey what happened and how you and then how you guys connected with you two Sure. I'll start it before we went into our, our toxic home. I used to be that person that used to think everybody was crazy if they said mold was dangerous. I, uh, I used to work for home builders in Austin. I used to run their communities. And um, I had this one client who, if I had actually looked at anything she had given me, I probably, probably would not be sitting here today. But I had this one client who um, went crazy about mold. And uh, we were just about to move and her window had broke during construction. She was so afraid that if it rained, water was going to get in, it was going to create mold and oh my God, it's so dangerous. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, and she was sending yeah. me all these leaks and to look at, and I was like, mold's not that dangerous. That's, you know, that's what we're taught to think. I never looked into it. And um, anyhow, a few months later, we moved into this town home. I quit my job because I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom to our son, Sebastian. He was 10 months old at the time. So we moved to Livingston, Texas to take a different opportunity that would allow me to stay at home. And unbeknownst to us, we moved into this townhome that had all this toxic mold in the wall cavities, the HVAC system on the floors. You couldn't see it. Yeah. So it wasn't obvious. We also couldn't smell it, but it was so toxic. And this is where it was a blessing because unlike a lot of people, 
you know, when the mold starts to grow, only one person or two people start to be affected. We were all affected that first week. Wow. Um, even my dogs were having issues. They were potting in the house when we didn't have any issues with them. They were scratching at themselves like they were infested with fleas. One of my dogs was gagging and throwing up. I developed um, the first symptom that I had was my menstrual cycle just out of the nowhere shifted from a very easy, non-painful one to extremely painful one, very heavy bleeding. I, had, I also had terrible GI issues out of nowhere. And then I developed this cystic acne all over my back, face and neck. And I'm in my thirties. And of course, a lot of people are saying it's stress. My son and my husband both developed sinus issues that first month. As we stayed in this environment, my son, who was already saying words, stopped speaking, went to grunting and just making noises. The light in his eyes literally went away. It was like nobody was even there. He wouldn't respond to his name. He was tired all the time. He was hitting his head on the walls and the floors. He was running into walls. He was walking on his tiptoes. Everything set him off all of a sudden. Yeah. You couldn't turn the lights on. You couldn't make loud noises. And he was... He developed these symptoms sooner than I did. Um, about six months, seven, seven months in, that's when I started to go really downhill fast. That's when I developed debilitating anxiety out of nowhere. The kind that puts you on the floor, you can't yes. control it. Um, hair loss, dark circles under the eyes, fatigue, joint pain to where you can't even close your hands because it hurts mm -hmm. so bad. Um, breathing issues. And of course the doctors couldn't figure out what was going on. Mm -hmm. Um, my husband who was literally on edge with me, cause he was like, what's going on with my family and my wife more so, um, you know, was kind of thinking like, maybe I should just start thinking about divorce. Um, but at that time, that's when he decided to stay home with me more to help me. And that's when his exposure level went up. And all of a sudden he started having random nosebleeds, um, fatigue. He developed terrible GI issues. He developed joint pain to where he could barely stand up in the mornings. And so he knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, how we figured it out was we left the environment to go visit my brother after 13 months. And that's when we all started to feel better. On our way back home, we had like another God kind of blessing. We got a text message out of nowhere when I was searching for everything but mold. And these tenants who rented a home from the same landlord, but just kind of down the street, yeah. texted us to let us know that their son, Cody, who the doctors were saying may have cystic fibrosis, yeah. didn't, and that it was actually mold exposure. And so we knew right then, we had been praying for this little boy, and that's why they texted us. Wow. Um, and we knew right then that that was God saying it's mold. And so when we got home, we tested the townhome. And sure enough, we had extremely high levels of Stachybotrys, Chichomium, oh. Cusarium, Aspergillus, Alternary, all of them. Mm -hmm. Um, at very high levels. And um, so we left the town home and we thought that's when, you know, our, our nightmare was over. But then we found out the remediation contractor was lying to us. The landlord was lying to us. Even our mold inspector wasn't even properly licensed. Wow. We were getting taken advantage of left and right. Because of um, my background and my husband's background, he had his own remodeling company. We decided to just go to the person who could give us the answers. And we found out that we qualified to become a licensed mold consultant. And we didn't plan on getting into the industry. We just wanted to get somebody to give us the answers. And so we went, he, my husband went to this class and while remediation is going on, I'm giving them all the details and the instructors telling us all the rules, laws and regulations that are being broken. And then when he got back, we found out we were expecting our second child. Um, that's when the landlord said everything was perfect. Mm -hmm. We can move back in. Josh went in, he did his own assessment. And of course we found out it wasn't ready for us to move back in. So we, we left and um, quickly found out how expensive going through mold can be because we financially got depleted. Yeah. Um, and then we found out that of course we were losing our second son Malachi at 23 weeks because he had developed a terminal birth defect called anencephaly, which is linked to fusarium, which has been linked to fusarium mold, 31 anencephalic children. Yeah. Um, has been, has had the whole correlation. And so in the species that were in my body also correlated, what yeah. happened was, um, my body stopped absorbing folate, which is what he needed to close his neural tube. Absolutely. Makes perfect sense. And so, you know, 
we lost home and you know, our landlords don't have to pay any price for any of this, unfortunately. And, um, but when we lost home, you know, that, that really is what solidified our whole destiny in this industry because we knew, we now knew the truth about mold and we also knew how corrupt this industry is with contractors and we wanted to go into it and be that honest voice and do everything we could to help people. And, um, and then Elizabeth came along. I, she, you know, it's very lonely when you go through mold, nobody really understands. And so when I met her, she was like my blessing to have a friend, yeah. you know, um, while going through it. And how did and, you uh, meet? Ugh, no tears. I know. Me no, too, tears. Like, no tears. <laughs> hey, it's okay. Oh. It's okay if there's tears oh. because like this is oh. the, the big deal. And we all know. I mean, I I'm the same way. Both of your stories make me to want to tear up. And I just want to reach across and hug you both because. But to take something that's so tragic, and both of you went through some your own tragedies, and to turn around and try to help people. I mean, there's no better, more beautiful thing that could come out of this. Um, but back to how did you guys meet? <laughs> I, I can tell you that because um, I'll never forget the phone call. And it's interesting because I had actually just gone to their apartment complex with my father the day before because my dad was looking for an apartment. And when we were touring the complex and we were, they were taking us through the model apartments, um, you could see mold like in the vents. And I pointed wow. it out to the lady and she told me, she's like, that's not mold, that's just dust. I was like, no, that's mold. And um, she then she, anyway, she kind of got mad at me, but and the next day, I, her to her. <laughs> I got a phone call from Derek, Elizabeth's, um, Elizabeth's husband. And typically whenever people call me, it's usually the mom. It's rarely ever the dad. And so I remember when he called and he just, he just sounded defeated. Like they have been through such a nightmare and, um, and he told me what, what had happened. And I was like, yeah, mold can cause that. And then when we, Josh went out there the next day and found that what they were living in was extremely toxic environment. And so a few months later after that, Elizabeth sent me an email and, and um, I forgot why, but that's how we reconnected and we just started talking. And, and then her and I both, after going through what we went through and honestly seeing everybody else who goes through it on this side and by being in this industry, the number one hurdle that keeps people from recovering is the lack of finances. There's nobody there financially to help you. There's nobody to give you money to go to, you know, get a hotel. There's nobody there to help you replace your belongings. You know, home insurance doesn't cover that. There's no, no health insurance is going to help you go to the proper medical doctors to get the testing and the treatment. There's no financial yeah. assistance I just, Let me there. just reiterate that because it's so important. And you listening out there, I know you know this if you've been through it, but fires, hurricanes, all these kinds of things are typically covered. Mold is not covered. And I, I do believe the insurance has gone to bat and created a state that most companies don't cover because it's so common. If they would go bankrupt, if they covered all of the mold. And especially with like you guys both had stories as the contractors go more quickly, things get built more quickly, uh, materials get da water damage in construction. And there's so many more things. You both probably have more knowledge on this than me, but so common right? Especially the cheapness. And now we make things instead of out of like brick and uh, stone and concrete, it's more cardboard. It's not cardboard, but it's like the, you know, the porous material, like uh, particle boards and things and drywall that really absorb moisture and can be just a nidus for mold. Or if they get damp while they're sitting on the lot, getting ready to be built and they get put in your home, all it takes is a little more moisture and that mold will start to grow. I, uh, I honestly was shocked when we got to into this industry because I thought we would be going to more flooded homes, you know, or older homes, but our number one client are new homes and people don't know that. Um, and that's because the builder's contract has that arbitration clause that keeps all their lawsuits out of the public. Oh. But new homes are actually the number one home that we go into. Wow. So it what's your, Emily, what's your, so now my thought is just because of more quick construction, less more like shoddy work and stuff, but did, did you see anything in particular that's like the materials or the kind of construction or the reasons why we're having so much more trouble with new construction? Yes. Um, well, first off, um, they're not all following the building codes. Mm -hmm. um, air infiltration is one of the biggest issues. Uh, using the wrong route in the showers, a lot of times the, the builder's not checking and the contractor that they hired is using a porous grout and not a um, non-porous grout. 
And so every time they take a shower, that water's going right through and right into the wall. Um, the HVAC system is another big one, improperly installed or not properly sized. So those are the three main ones that we find. And also the wheat poles on the outside. I can't tell you how many times where builders will put phony wheat poles. They don't go all the way through because they forgot to do it. What does that mean? Tell me more. I don't even know about the poles. What is that part of it? So the wheat poles on the outside of the, of the brick veneer at the bottom, that's mm -hmm. supposed to allow for moisture to evacuate because the stone or the brick, mm -hmm. that isn't non-pore. So when it rains and stuff, moisture does get behind that brick. And those wheat poles are supposed to allow for that moisture to evacuate out properly and not sit inside of those wall cavities. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Cause of course that exterior environment. Um, wow. Um, so you two met and you had, and I could hear in your stories, like with your children, even the, the regression of language and the, and the relationship issues, which I think any of us who've had mold have gone through because we're not ourselves. Right. And we're more for me, it was, and I literally, like I said, I was writing about the limbic system, which is our fight or flight response. And there's literally literature on the chemical a lot of the literature is around chemical toxic exposures and mold is no different. And as you mentioned, Emily, these mycotoxins, people don't realize, but they are immunotoxic. So they crush our immune systems. They are um, teratogenic, which causes, can cause birth defects as in your case. Um, they can cause uh, malnutrition, malabsorption. They can cause mast cell activation and they can cause neurological brain dysfunction. Um, Dr. Dale Bredesen teaches on Alzheimer's and he says about one third of the young younger, like 50s and 60s Alzheimer's patients are related to mold to one in three. And he actually said that's probably an underestimate. So even like new onset dementia in many cases is mold related. And this doesn't surprise you guys because you have both experienced some of this stuff. I believe it. Yeah. 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 I couldn't remember anything when it, we were in the thick of it. Yeah. yeah. Me too. I, I was there too. And people have heard my story. So I don't need to share all that. But I, and interestingly, just a little bit about that was I was never I never thought I would go into mold. I mean, I, what doctor even really is taught about that. I knew enough about it to know it was real, but my own experience after the Boulder floods and my office got flooded, I got severely ill, very similar to both of your stories. And I realized, oh my gosh, I have to learn everything I can, not only to heal myself, but as I started to realize, and then after I recovered and, you know, I've been seeing patients, I started going back to patients and really, you know, asking them the questions. And as you well know, if you, if someone would have just said, do you have mold in your home before you knew it? Everybody's like, no, I don't have mold in my home. So you have to get creative about, well, you have you had any water leaks in your dishwasher or your showers, or is there ever a musty smell or as the attic vented properly? And there's so many questions that get to the heart of this that people don't realize they have mold or they might have exposures because like both of you said, initially, it's usually not visible. Like we don't see it. It's not like there's black gross stuff on the walls. It's hidden behind walls, under floorboards, all kinds of places that we don't think to look. And often we don't even smell it. Now, if it gets bad, there's a musty smell, but frequently you can be uh, massively affected by mold and have no signs outwardly in your home, right? And that's the scary part for, you know, not knowing. So then how did Malachi's message come about? I know that's after your son who, you know, uh, passed and it was at 23 weeks, he said, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. He was, uh, he was diagnosed at 23 weeks um, okay. and the hospital that we were at um, due to their Christian beliefs would not induce me for, like other hospitals would have for terminal pregnancy. So we carried him to term and he died at 35 weeks. So we delivered at 35 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but the way that the name came about for the foundation is when my husband and I, before we found out about the birth defect, uh, we were trying to figure out what we were going to name him. And we finally decided on a name, Malachi. And so I looked up the meaning of it and um, we just found that it was perfect for us at that time in our season because his name biblically means um, our angel or my message. And so we felt that he was like our angel from God, letting us know that everything was going to be okay. And that, you know, he was also the message that that, you know, we are gonna get through this. And um, so for the foundation, we named the foundation in honor of him, but we also found that the name was fitting because we hope the foundation serves as an angel of assistance for those that it helps. And also that it gives people a message of hope that they aren't alone and that they can get through this. Oh, 
You're going to make me cry again. This is so, it's so beautiful. And then this is why I want to talk to you on here because I want to share your message. I want to share what you guys are doing. And this is if more people could be like the both of you to take something that was completely tragic in your life and loss and suffering and all kinds of things, and then turn it into a blessing to other people. That's what our world needs more of. <laughs> so, so then how did you found the foundation and tell us more about what you guys do with Malachi's message? Uh, we, started just conversation i think mm -hmm. at that point it was probably more out of rants of you know this shouldn't be happening to people like yeah. our, our kids should have toys like we used all of our gofundme on medical bills that didn't help and it kind of started that way and then we both healed enough to think a little bit clearer and go okay you know what? maybe we should actually do something about this and emily took on the legwork originally of all the paperwork and got us cleared with texas and with the irs and in the process we were creating a lot of resources um, and at the time we had some other women involved with us and we were kind of at an impasse on which direction should we go should we just go resources or should we go foundation and it was really heavy on my heart that i just wanted to be the hands and feet that helped people and so at that point i said hey do you, you know, would you guys mind voting me in as executive director of Malachi's message of the foundation side? Because this is really where, where I feel like my calling is right now. Like I want to help people. And at the time I felt like it was really important for my daughters to see that, to see that even though you go through tragedy, we're big on like failure isn't shame. Like it's something that happens. It's a part of your journey, but you move forward from it. And so I wanted them to see that you can make something really beautiful from something really ugly to the point where I think the first children will go into our how we help people, but the first kids that we help my daughter, who the only thing she remembers losing are her dolls. And so she has a very, very unhealthy attachment to them. And we just let her have it at this point. Yeah. And she wanted to actually give some of her stuffies to the first kid that we were helping and asked if she could mail them to him or if we could go deliver them because she wanted to make sure no kid went, went through what she went through. And at that point, right, I'm just sobbing in the store trying to get gift cards. Yeah. But that's, that's, you know, that for me personally, that is why I looked at it. And Emily and I, we just clicked. It was, it was bizarre. And genuinely, like we are best friends. We do life together and it's weird. We, we joke, we're like, if we don't talk and it's been three days, something's wrong. Somebody must've died. Mm -hmm. um, but we just clicked and we both had the same heart, the same passion for being credible and for being above board and for being above reproach and making sure we did it the right way. So we worked on it for three years before we went live. March of last year is actually when we went live um, online with Malachi's message. And it was a three year process of learning and growing and talking to people that have been there before us and really still learning from failure, but doing it as co-founders together. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a it's been a fun adventure. We decided on eight forms of assistance and we basically sat down as a team and went, where did we need the most help? And from the people they've talked to, because they are in the industry going, okay, where are you hearing that people need the most need? And we went through, we had a very long list and we went, okay, that's a little much. So we brought it down to eight forms of assistance. One is specifically for military and one is specifically for minors. And we said, okay, let's do this. We're not sure how it's going to work or what's going to happen. We didn't have investors behind us. We're very grassroots still. And we went live. And by word of mouth, we started talking to people. And that's honestly how we're like slowly growing is just our reputation and word of mouth and people going, oh, okay, like you're legit. You're actually helping people. You're trying to do this the right way. Yeah. So that is how we started. We've been active a year. In the last year, we've helped 18 different kids or families in four forms of our assistance. Um, wow. Currently, we help with mold assessment reimbursement up to $1,000. We help with toy replacement for minors. We send them on shopping sprees with gift cards. And that is a lot of fun. We've had oh, yeah. multiple moms call us and be like, my kid just cried and went, mom, why would they help us? They don't know me. Oh. And like, you know, like that, nobody should go through that as a kid. Yeah. You shouldn't yeah. have to wonder where your next game board's going to be. Right. We help with clothing replacement, furniture and replacement. As you well know, again, people probably know this by now, but you you can lose everything. Not everybody loses everything, but most yes. of the time. Yeah, it's a very huge loss. It's like it's the same as a fire yes. or some of these things, right? Yeah. Except you're all alone because nobody, yeah. it's not a fire or it's not a hurricane. You literally go through yes. it. Yes. Yeah, my, most people my, don't understand, right? That's the worst part because you're like, they're like, mold. Well, how can that be? You know, that's, it's like way easier to have cancer and have a fire to your home than it is to have mold because yes. no one understands. <laughs> yeah. So it makes you even like more alone because you can't talk about it because right. you feel like, 
people don't understand. Right, right. Oh, wow. Yeah, my, my husband worked hard. Go ahead. Yeah, my no, my husband worked Hurricane Harvey here right after. And uh, a bunch of guys on his crew knew we had lost stuff to mold and they just blew it off until they all saw a line of people coming out of housing from a flooded neighborhood with like their kids on their shoulders and one bag of stuff. And one of his buddies looked at him and went, man, I'm going to keep it censored, the lineman. But he goes, man, that, that's really got to, you know, that's got to suck losing everything like that without knowing about it. And the cab went silent. And like one of them looked at Derek and went, oh, my gosh, that is what you and your family just went through, isn't it? Like it doesn't, there's no connection that that does the same thing as a massive hurricane or a flood. You're right. So You're sad. Absolutely right. It's just in literally in my neighborhood in January, it was actually December 30th. We had a really severe wildfire come through and about a thousand people in my area lost their homes. And it's, it, but same thing. I mean, it's like, obviously this is a horrible tragedy and we've been able to, you know, try to help the community, but it's very similar to that situation yeah. where you lose. Yeah. Um, just, so you guys just went official this year, did you say the March of, or last year? March of okay. last year. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So I've got um, it here and anywhere you're listening or watching this, I'll put links to Malachi's message. Um, if you're listening, I believe it's Malachi's message.org and that's M-A-L-A-C-H-I-S-M-E-S-S-A-G-E.org and at Facebook, same thing. So I've linked those here where we're live, but anywhere you're listening, you'll find those. Um, how can people support you guys? Um, are you a nonprofit? Um, are you in the process or? Okay. So. Yeah, we were fully certified as a nonprofit before we went live. We were certified in September of 2022 through the IRS. So all, all donations are tax deductible. You can donate online or currently right now we have our pie in the face fundraiser going for our toy replacement fund. And then any funds over that go towards our mission where you can pick from, I think we have 22 people that have donated their faces so you can purchase a pie and on June 5th, oh. it'll be thrown in their face. So it's <laughs> fun. It's fun. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Um, well, what else is it that you guys need support with? And, uh, and obviously, again, I want to get this message out and hopefully that will be a little help. But what else? Um, what, what's your next goals? What kinds of things can people support your mission with? Spreading awareness about the foundation, um, donating towards any tours of assistance funds uh, would be very helpful. Um, especially the military fund. I don't know if, if you've seen the military and what's going on there, Dr. Jill, but it's just horrible of what they're having to be put through. Yeah. Have you seen that, those conditions? Uh, some, well, I've had patients that have come through that. And then my daughter's in the army, she's a captain. So I've heard her stories too of on bases and stuff, but I don't probably know the extent of it. Is it just really significant what you're finding, the housing? I've honestly never seen any, I've never seen more toxic environments than the, the homes on base. Wow. Wow. And is this all over? You're finding it or just in, okay. Wow. I'm They're not just dealing with mold, but sewage, level three water contamination, lead, asbestos. So um, getting them the answers that they need to know if their home is healthy is very important, not just for them, but I mean, there are military, those are our support. Those are the people that protect our country. And tell us real quickly, I want to be real clear about what pieces, because you got a couple of different parts, the, the kids and the replacing toys and things and the military, um, what kind of uh, parts of the, so say we are talking about support and I'm going to come back to that in the end. Um, but, uh, what about the actual, say someone has a need, how could they contact you and what kinds of things are you helping out with specifically? So they can apply on line if they go to our website malachismessage.org and they can click on apply and all of the forms of assistance are listed there and they simply click the apply button they enter their information and then i review all the applications once week and we get back to them currently because we're still so young right we've got big dreams to be all over but right now we are working with texas residents Okay. And we're doing that intentionally because I looked at it before this interview and we have over a hundred thousand dollars worth of people on our wait list right now that have been accepted, that are just waiting for assistance. A lot of it with medical bills, a lot of it with temporary housing, and they can go there and apply. If they also want to donate to a specific person, we have two people right now, more on our wait list that are joining where they can donate directly to a specific person that's on our wait list which is really helpful. So if you wanna to donate to a face and you wanna hear their story, you can just click on their campaign and donate directly to them. And that those are the main reasons, um, they're the main ways, I guess. The other one is our monthly. So we have a few people that donate $5 a month 
And that's huge for us, like for just our morale to like see the monthly donation come in. It helps create sustainability and it just makes me smile every every month when oh, I see I them. love that you said but you know how too small, huge. right? I'm sorry to interrupt. Like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Imagine. Like any anything helps, right? We're a nonprofit. We do this yeah. because people care. And the people that cared about us took care of us. You know, we want to turn around and help people take care of other people, right? That's it. That's all that's literally all we're about yeah. to the core. We're not doing this for selfish gain in any way, shape, or form. So yeah, even five dollars a month is a huge help because it goes to help somebody else that just lost everything. Oh yeah. I want to put a challenge out there, you guys. I did not plan on anything like this, but as I'm hearing your story, I knew that what you were doing was important. And I knew the moment I got the brochure and that Elizabeth, you contacted me, I just knew that you two were special and that also that your message and all that you went through, like I said, I love people who take suffering and tragedy and pain and difficulty and turn it into a way to bless other people. Because I think that's part of why we're here on this earth, <laughs> because we all, all of us have loss and suffering. Not everybody has mold related illness, but when we can take something that's tragedy and find purpose and meaning in that, not only does it give us, us like an excitement about life because we are able to turn that around and then we can go back to something really tough and say, well, that allowed me to get here and to really help people. So as you can tell, I almost get choked up because I'm so passionate about living my life that way to the best of my ability. And also like, if I can let people like you and help you out, I am so excited and I love what you're doing. So what I'm going to say publicly live is I would like to match any donors. And I don't know if they can just put my name in the donation so that you guys can tell me what I match, but up to $20,000, I would like to donate, um, up to twenty thousand dollars, and I'll match anyone who will donate up to that amount. I will match, and I'm going to say this publicly. I didn't plan on doing it, but oh I, would, I would love oh to God. do that for you guys. So um, I'll put that out there, and then if you're listening here, you can just donate malachismessage.org. Is that the best place to go to put a donation in? That is. I'll actually I'll put a form on our homepage for that specific thing as Perfect. soon as we're done here. Perfect. Perfect. So there'll yeah. be a form there. You can donate. Yeah. I will match. I've said it live. So I'm, I'm <laughs> scouts on her, <laughs> um, but hopefully that'll help you guys wow. um, at least make a dent in the, in the pile of people that are waiting to get help. Um, I really believe in what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you're you welcome. so much. That's huge. <laughs> you're welcome. That's huge. <laughs> well, um, gosh, any last parting words of encouragement to people who are going through this or, um, Anything else that, that we can do to support you both? Uh, we have a podcast that we just launched, so you can check that out. Um, and we're really big on just reminding people like you're not alone and you're not crazy. We both felt that way. I love so that. Love that you do <laughs> too, right? Yeah. Like you're not, you're not alone. You feel it. You're not. Um, and so that's, that's why we created the podcast, honestly, and just so that people can hear their people's stories too. And we love what you're doing. I love listening to your stuff. So just spreading awareness and helping us meet your matching goal. My goodness, that would help so many people right now on our wait list. So, oh, that, yeah, I love it. Um, what, any other like um, bits of wisdom that you learned in this that you want to leave? Like say someone's out there and they're like right in the midst of this and they've, you know, had a big loss or they're trying to find safe housing. Um, what would you tell that person? I'd love to hear from both of you, Emily and uh, Elizabeth. If, Go for it. if they just had a big loss and they're trying to find safe housing. Yeah. I would, um, I would say, listen to your gut instinct. You know, if you are trying to find safe housing and you go into an environment, a lot of us are, have been sensitized and literally like we know that we're being exposed again. And unfortunately, this industry doesn't have, you know, a set protocol for inspectors to follow. So somebody comes in and says everything's safe, but you feel that it's not listen to your gut instinct. I feel like that's a God given gift. Mm -hmm. Use it. And that's trying to tell you, you know, that's not a safe environment, get out or go get another opinion. Um, and then just, you know, don't lose hope. It, you know, you can recover from this. You may not recover fully, but you re can recover enough to regain your quality of life back. Mm. Awesome. Elizabeth? I, I would go the, yeah, I would go the other direction. This, this is why we work well together, very yin yang. Um, I totally believe, right, that emotions in your body play a huge role. They correlate. And so I think grief is a big thing for me. And encouraging people to remember to grieve what they've lost, even if it's in little bits and pieces, but acknowledge that you've lost something. And that's also going to help your body be able to handle what's coming next. And so I'm very big on grieve and give, if you're doing it with your partner, give them space to grieve. My husband in the last year just started that process and like 
remember everybody grieves differently and everybody grieves at different times, but it's necessary for your body to heal to be able to actually grieve and walk through the steps of grief. I love that you said that because so many of us kind of push it down and we suppress it and we don't really feel it. And it comes back in our physical body to cause illness yes. in some way. So that's a really important point to actually let yourself cry, let yourself grieve, whatever it is, whatever, you know, for you to let those emotions flow through. And sometimes they feel overwhelming, like they're going to take over and they won't. It's like a wave that will come and it'll go and it'll probably come again and again. But I love that you said that because even for physical health, that's such a core thing. Um, well, I am so blessed to have time with both of you. Love what you're doing. So excited to, to hear more today and to support you. And um, I just wish you the very best in all your endeavors. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, Dr. Thank you.